So here I am back at the studios at KGNU and with me is Michael Sandler who I've met before by accident running barefoot on a trail in Boulder and he's going to give me a little bit of a lesson on how I myself and others can start out with barefoot running without doing a whole lot of damage. Michael, maybe before we start you can give us an idea of a website or where people can learn more. Uh, you can certainly learn more at runbear.com, that's R-U-N-B-A-R-E. Uh, we've got lots of useful tips, uh, insight, information, even a forum. And uh, we're going to have a fantastic new Barefoot Running book coming out in February. Uh, it'll be called Barefoot Running, and you can find out more about that book at barefootrunningbook.com. Fantastic, and thanks for your patience. A lot of cars are coming and going. KGNU is a busy place, but I'm glad you're here. So, what can you tell me about just a regular person such as myself who wants to get started running barefoot? What are the tips? Well, the first thing I like to do uh, at any of my clinics is have people uh, demonstrate the difference between running barefoot and running in a shoe. And the easiest way to do that is, whether you've got a shoe on or not, is just to stomp your foot straight down on the ground. You can see me probably hear the foot going onto the ground there. And that's like a typical heel strike, which you're going to get in the shoe. You can feel the impact there. I don't know if you can do it with the camera there or not. You can feel the impact. Right. And then, if you're running barefoot, you're going to put your foot out about a foot in front of you and come down on the forefoot there. And see the difference in how light that feels. Again, in a shoe, you're locked into the ground. You're, uh, the shoe, the one or two inches of rubber, is responsible for all of the cushioning that you're going to get. And out here on the forefoot, you've got your forefoot, your arch, your Achilles, your calf, your quad, even your glute and your hamstring that acts as a two to three foot long lever or spring. This giant, beautiful shock absorber, it's gonna absorb and rebound. So with each step, it's efficient and cushiony, much more so than a shoe. Fantastic, and I interviewed you a few minutes ago for an on-air uh, play of what you're all about as far as barefoot running goes, but you gave some basic advice for a beginner. It was something to the effect of Give it a try, take your shoes off, go barefoot running, but you had a cautionary note. When you start feeling bad... Well, I have the two question rule first off, which is as you're running along, the first time that you hear yourself say, hmm, am I doing too much? Should I head for home? Make mental note about that. Think about that, make note of it, remember it. The next time or further along down the trail, you hear yourself say, hmm, should I just turn for home? For, you're finished, you're done. It's your gut or your intuition telling you I'm done, I've had enough, it's time to go for home. So what I like to do is tell people to take their shoes with them, which I now call no longer shoes, but hand weights. Have them running along with them, and the minute that you say, hmm, should I go for home, slip on the shoes, head home nice and gentle and light, and wait again to go for your next day, uh, your next time, which is probably a couple days later. Particularly when you start, I like a day of recovery in between. The second most important thing, though, is when you start barefoot, I like people to go truly barefoot rather than in a minimalist shoe, even a Vibram five finger, because I want you to feel the ground. When you feel the ground and you let your skin be your guide, the chances are you're not gonna do too much or overdo it. So when your skin gets roughed up and gets sore, because your skin is 600 times stronger than any other skin in your body, but at first it's not used to it, it's baby soft from being in a shoe. When it gets roughed up or sore, far before you ever get a blister, turn for home and recover and let it build back stronger. If you go barefoot, you feel the ground, and you're gonna learn how to run extra light. If you're in a minimalist footwear, even the Vibram, the one with the funny toes, it's a really cool shoe, you're not able to feel the ground, and it's quite likely you're gonna overdo it at first. Fantastic, good information. I'll link your websites and also the interview we conducted today on KGNU. Michael, thanks so much. Thank you.